Well, to talk about blowing the lid then on racism, we're joined by Busisi Wemguni, who's an old girl from uh, St. Mary's. She matriculated in 2006. Busisi, it's been quite a while since you left the schooling system, and I imagine a lot of reflection then to really uh, dissect the kind of experiences that you had. At which point did you realize that your experience at school perhaps was not the right experience? At which point were you able to see the the nuanced racism or the explicit racism and call it out for that? Uh, thank you so much for that question. I think I started realizing that I wasn't being treated as an equal. Um, when you would see that, for example, in classrooms, the N-word was said with a lot of gratuity when reading English um, literature, for example, you would have teachers who would explicitly tell you that, no, they've forgotten that post-apartheid happened and that black people had rights now. They felt that comfortable saying that to a group of girls. Um, you would have the headmaster at that time telling us that they intend to accept more black children um, because they weren't before and they needed the money. So all those instances were instances where people were letting you know that you were a second-class citizen and that you are here because they're virtuous, not because they think you deserve to be here. Is it easy to call out the racism uh, post your schooling uh, experience? Do you think that uh, it's something that you would have been able to take on during your, your years at St. Mary's? Uh, I don't think it's possible to be as vocal as you can be while you are in the schooling system because they make it incredibly difficult for you to be that way. Um, both the pupils and the teachers and the institution. So also your marks will be affected and your, I think your general well-being at the school will be affected. And you are a child as well. So all those three factors contribute to making you very uncomfortable and very scared to speak up. And if you do speak up, you are persecuted. So it's easier to speak up now as an adult, um, as someone who is outside the system and as someone who wants the system to do better. What does it mean then for all of the young women and the young men that have been uh, raising their voices over the last couple of weeks saying that actually um, we want an end to racism and these are our experiences? What, is, uh, what are they potentially opening themselves up to? I think if the schools decide to change, it will lead to a very good time in South African schooling just as a whole. If the schools decide to persecute them and make their lives harder, then those kids' lives will become harder than they had ever anticipated. But either way, I think we're reaching a point in South African schooling now where black people especially are saying that enough is enough. If you're going to take our money, you need to respect us enough to treat us like first-class citizens, like white kids are afforded. What do you think the biggest hindrances in the system are? Um, racist teachers, racist parents who raise racist pupils. Mm. I know that's very um, harsh, but um, if you hire racist teachers and you couple them with racist pupils, then those two factors will always suppress and oppress um, black students. It's interesting because you've also brought up parents in your answer, which means that there is a certain level of expectation that you would place on the parents of uh, learners at any school when it comes to tackling some of these social issues. That's very true, yes, because um, as much as the teachers and the institution were racist at St. Mary's, a lot of the pupils um, were also really racist, and they use the K-word gratuitously. And obviously that kind of behavior is learned at home and accepted at home. So that's where it starts. So parents definitely have a responsibility to train their kids um, about just basic decency and not being prejudiced or racist and learning how to live in the world with black people who are powerful. You know, you're raising such important issues, and one of the debates that we've had on this um, conversation has been some people who say, well, technically, um, black people, black parents who are sending their children um, to private schools know the culture of these schools, and therefore, uh, they know what they, part of what they're signing up for. What do you make about that argument? Um, I think that's false, and also trying to punish black people for having the privilege and the financial ability to be in certain spaces. 
if you are in certain spaces, racism should not follow you in any of those spaces, whether you are president or whether you are a street cleaner. Mm -hmm. Okay, racism should not be something that makes your life harder. Your skin color should not make your life harder in any space that you occupy. So I think the idea that the culture belongs to whiteness in itself is also really false. The reason those schools are like that is because white people did not allow black people to go there. Now we are allowed, so we're changing the culture in those places because they are a part of black culture now, and that needs to be respected, and racism has no place. Mm -hmm. Even if, yes, black people are rich now, still, I shouldn't be subjected to racism just because I'm black and have privilege. Many people today also look at schools as a microcosm of what's happening in our society. So the racism that one would experience in, the school, in, in, in school is not very different to what, would exp to what one would experience in the corporate space uh, in some sectors of, of South Africa. And I wonder, when you juxtapose what you went through at St. Mary's versus being a young black female who now has to create a life for themselves, would you say that that, ex that experience is secluded from real life South Africa? Um, I think the juxtaposition you're making now is really useful because it lets us know that racism is pervasive in any, in any circumstances where I think blackness is operating. So yes, of course, in corporate spaces, black women are also privileged in those spaces to even be there, yes, but again, the problem is that racism shouldn't be a part of any fabric of social life in South Africa. So even if normal life is not a corporate life or not a private school life, racism shouldn't be a part of those spaces either. I think that's the greater point that we're making, and this is just one of the spaces that we're fighting racism in. Sure.